Gaming is something that a lot of people hold near and dear to their hearts, and with technology ever advancing, modern gaming should be the best it's ever been, and in a lot of ways it is. But in just as many ways, modern gaming has failed us. But in order to really explain how it's failed us, you first gotta go back to where it all began. Okay, maybe not where it all began, like not the first video game ever, but old enough to where things that you could do today couldn't really apply. Look at Dig Dug, for example. When Dig Dug released, that was it. The game that came out in arcade cabinets and was eventually ported over to consoles was going to be the exact same no matter what. There could be a game-breaking bug in Dig Dug, or some major exploit that the devs didn't really want you to do, but... The game was already imported into these arcade cabinets. There was nothing you could do. There was no patches, there was no hotfixes, there was no downloads. What you got when you played the game was what it was always going to be. And that's something that doesn't exist anymore in modern gaming. If a game releases now, you can always patch it later. You can always add more to it. You can fix things further down the line. But you couldn't always do that. Snap back to reality for a moment. Look at how gaming has evolved. We started off with games that would release as is, and if there was any sort of a problem with it, then that's how the game was going to be remembered. There was no way to update these games once it had been pushed out to the general public. So if there was a game-breaking bug, a glitch, something that the developer didn't intend to be in the game, so long as the game was already out there to the world, there was nothing they could do. Eventually, people started to be able to get expansion packs. You could go to the store, buy a disc, and get additional content for whatever game it was you were playing. Slowly but surely, people started getting access to the internet all around the world. You could download these expansion packs without having to actually go to the store and buy the physical disc. Being able to download things means now you can fix these games. If there was a game-breaking bug, something the developer didn't like, they wanted to fine-tune something, they could fix it on their end and push out an update to anybody who owns the game. And just like that, the game's working as intended, how the developer wants it to be. With all of this, so many more things got added. You could buy DLC for a game, you could buy in-game cosmetics, you could buy a multitude of different things. A game could now evolve with the times. You didn't need to bring out a sequel right away in order to implement new features. Of course, there's more intricacies to it than that, that was a super simplified version, all just to paint the picture as to how we got to where we are today. How all of these things combined have compounded into how gaming is failing us now, with the live service model. Take a look at your games library, whatever platform it may be on. I bet a good chunk of those are gonna be games as a service, a live service game. Call of Duty, Fortnite, Halo, Rocket League, Apex Legends, Overwatch, all of these games and so many more are live service games. But what does it actually mean to be a live service game? You hear of so many games being live service and it automatically has a negative connotation, but it doesn't always need to be that way. Some games are very successful and know how to do a live service style right. Look at Fortnite, for example. Whether or not you like the gameplay of Fortnite, you have to admit their live service structure works extremely well. Fortnite is always updating the game. They are adding new points of interest, weapons, quests, things of that nature. There is always something new going on in Fortnite. This isn't something that was possible 20 years ago in gaming. Fortnite is an example of how to do a live service game. On the opposite side of the spectrum, you have games like Halo Infinite or Modern Warfare 2. Games that have adopted some sort of a live service element, but have also launched without core features that literally every other game in their respective franchise has had. And that's the main issue with live service games. It's not the fact that it is a live service game. It's that a lot of these games that are implementing these features, these live service elements, are neglecting their core fan base. They are launching incomplete games in favor of having these live service elements because they know they can just add more content later. They know they can have more events and more things going on later on in the game. So there's no rush to make a full and complete game and launch it on day one. Take a look back. What's the most recent game you remember launching in a completely finished state? Like, where all of the content that you expected to be there was actually there on day one. 
Sure, games still release in that way today, but the list is probably very short. A lot of games now release in an unfinished state. There's missing features. Not a lot of maps, core things from previous installments are not even available on day one. And the reason that that keeps happening is because these publishers know that they can put out an unfinished product and then continuously update it and add more content to it. So that way it feels like you're actually getting more for the game, when in reality you're getting what the game should have been on day one. And once again, I'm not saying that all live service games are bad. I'm saying there's a right and a wrong way to go about supporting a game that's going to be live service. Releasing a game with all of the content that somebody would reasonably expect to be in a new game, and then continuously updating it, adding content, having new events and stuff, that's perfectly reasonable, and most people are going to be completely fine with that. The main issue stems from when these games are releasing completely unfinished. They're not even doing a good job at hiding it. You can clearly tell that this game was rushed or it's missing a ton of content. And that adding all this content back in doesn't feel like we're getting new stuff. It feels like we're getting back to square one, where we should have been to begin with. But do you want to know the worst part? The reason why so many games are able to release in an unfinished state with so many missing features? It's because we allow it to happen. Now, of course, the general consensus is, delay the game. Make it as good as it possibly can be. If you don't have core features like a working leaderboard or a combat record in a game that has always had that, delay the game and make sure it works when you're going to launch it. But we're complicit when they release an unfinished game. We can sit here and say it's unacceptable that games are releasing in an unfinished state, but we keep rewarding them for it. We're still giving these developers our money for an unfinished product because they know they can make an unfinished game and we will still reward them for it. We are just as much of the problem as they are. But what can we do to make sure it gets better? How do we get the message across that we want games to release full and complete and we could still want content in the future? You have to vote with your wallet. Don't pre-order a game, especially if you don't know exactly how it's going to be on day one. When a game does release, look at reviews and see if it's going to be worth your hard-earned money. If a game's free to play, you don't need to spend money on it right away. And if it's a game where you feel like you need to spend money on it, it's probably predatory and probably in your best interest not to be spending anything on it anyways. I mean, take a look at Fortnite. Sure, you can spend money on in-game skins, but realistically, you don't need to spend any money on the game to actually have fun with it. Again, Fortnite is a live service game done right. Sure, there's a lot of ways that Epic Games can make a ton of money with Fortnite, and they do, but the game is still complete, and it's a ton of fun to come back to every once in a while. A game like Call of Duty that might release without a ton of maps, might not have a working leaderboard, and a bunch of missing features that you would come to expect from a fully finished AAA title, is that really going to be worth your money? And of course, with anything like this, it's going to be easier said than done. I mean, I'm a part of the problem too. I pre-ordered Modern Warfare 2. I've spent real-world money that I worked for in Halo Infinite. And of course, yeah, maybe not every single game is going to get my money, and not every single live service game I feel is going to be worth my time, but I'm also rewarding these developers and these publishers for creating an unfinished product. I'm giving them money for the same thing I'm complaining about. And I'm not saying that these games can't turn around. Look at a game like No Man's Sky. I've never personally played it, but I know it launched in a really rough state, like not even close to what they had promised to begin with. And through years of updates and the developers actually supporting the game, it's apparently a ton of fun now. And of course, these games can follow the same route. I mean, I still really love the core gameplay loop of Modern Warfare 2. I just acknowledge there's a ton of missing content. And I have no plans on actually spending real world money on this game, at least not for a good while. I do happen to have a good amount of COD points banked up, so realistically I don't need to spend anything, but the point is still there. All in all, a live service game doesn't need to be a bad thing. Realistically, when implemented correctly, it will benefit both parties. The consumer gets to have more content, more ways to enjoy the game, and they will continue playing and eventually spend more money, which in turn gives the developers and the publisher more profit, more revenue. That's a win-win scenario. So the issue isn't what a live service game is. It's what live service games seem to be recently, which is games releasing without the full amount of content that people would expect. And nothing's really going to change until it starts hurting their profits, at least not for the foreseeable future. 
So how do you feel about the current state of gaming? Has live service games turned you off of the medium entirely? Let's continue this conversation down below. As always, thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates!